I'm Heath Lambert, and you're listening to Marked by Grace, a podcast applying the grace of Jesus to all of life. Welcome to a very special episode of Marked by Grace. It's special for a couple of reasons. First of all, this is December the 4th, and so the very first full week of December, and so welcome to December, and also welcome to the 100th episode of Marked by Grace. We have been doing this 100 times, and I am very, very thankful. I am thankful that you listen, and I am thankful that you send in your questions, and I would love to get more of your questions. If you have a question you'd like me to answer on Marked by Grace, then send it in to markedbygrace at fbcjacks.com. That is markedbygrace at fbcjacks.com, and it's fbcjacks with an X. I'd love to get your questions, and I will take as many of them as I can get to. And on this very special 100th episode... I wanted to answer a very controversial question. If election is true, why share the gospel? If election is true, why share the gospel? So nothing controversial there, just uh, <laughs> just an easy uh, softball right down the middle there. If election is true, why share the gospel? Nothing difficult to get into. It's actually a loaded question because it says if election is true. Why share the gospel? So the question assumes that the doctrine, the biblical teaching of election is true, and that is not an altogether safe assumption. Um, this is one of the most debated doctrines in all of Christianity, election that is. And so in answering the question, we have to establish the premise of the question, if election is true. Uh, I do think uh, election is true. I, I actually don't know uh, that we can debate that too much. Uh, this is something that is taught uh, repeatedly throughout the scriptures. It comes up over and over and over again. Many other teachings in the Bible are actually founded on the teaching of election. There's a lot of places that we could go to to talk about the truthfulness of the doctrine of election in Scripture. Uh, but what I'm going to do is uh, just pick one uh, for a reason that I'll try to explain as we go throughout the podcast over the next few minutes. Um, I'm looking at Romans uh, chapter 9, uh, Romans chapter 9, and in verse 10, it says, When Rebekah had conceived children by one man, our forefather Isaac, Though they were not yet born and had done nothing either good or bad in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of him who calls, she was told the older will serve the younger as it is written, Jacob I loved but Esau I hated. Lots to talk about in that passage. Lots lots of teachings to unpack, but we're going to zoom in on the doctrine of election. And what, what Romans chapter 9 says is that Rebekah was told by God that he's loved Jacob and he has hated Esau for a reason. And the reason for that statement is that he wants his purpose of election to stand or to continue. He wants to establish the teaching of election. And so he says in advance, before they're born, before they've done anything good or bad, he says that he has elected one of them. Now, listen, you can have a debate about what that means. You can have a debate about how to interpret it. You can have a debate about how much weight to put on it. You can have a conversation about how to understand it in relation to other doctrines. What you can't debate is whether it's in the Bible or not. You can't say, I reject that. You can't say, I'm not going to listen to that. You can't say, I'm not going to pay any attention to that. Uh, this is the Bible this is God's word. Every word of God is given to us for our instruction. And so here it is, and we have to embrace it. So if election is true, and it is, then why share the gospel? This question reminds me of a story, uh, uh, something that happened to me several years ago uh, at First Baptist Church. We had uh, somebody who uh, no longer attends uh, our church. Uh, I had a long conversation 
uh, with this fella and a few others uh, about uh, my steadfast commitment to sharing the gospel, about how it is my desire that I be an evangelistic person, that the church I lead here at First Baptist be an evangelistic church, that Christians be an evangelistic people. We talked about the primacy of evangelism as, as uh, fully half of the Great Commission. We're doing evangelism and we're doing discipleship. And I was at great pains to talk about my passion personally and uh, as a leader in God's church for evangelism. And uh, some months uh, after that meeting, uh, he asked for another meeting, and he came into my office, and he started the meeting a little chilly. Uh, It was clear he was not the most happy. He was not the most excited. And he looked at me, and very sternly, he said, Dr. Lambert, integrity is like virginity, and once you lose it, you can never get it back. (laughs) Listen, I got to tell you, the meeting, the rest of the meeting was very, very serious, but that's funny. That's a funny statement. I have never forgotten the humor uh, of that moment, and I appreciate it. And what he was insinuating was that maybe I didn't have integrity. Maybe he was insinuating that I was a virgin. I, I don't really don't know. But it seemed like, <laughs> as the conversation went on, that he was insinuating uh, that I didn't have integrity. Because what he proceeded to do was he produced a book, a book that I had written, a book called A Theology of Biblical Counseling. And he opened up to a page in that book, and he had highlighted uh, some words where I seemed to be teaching the doctrine of election. And in fact, I was teaching the doctrine of election from Romans chapter 9. And he said, now, Dr. Lambert, you told me you were evangelistic and you wanted our church to be evangelistic and you wanted to share the gospel with everybody. But here you taught election. Now, how can that be true? And I told him it was because I am not a theological liberal. You know what a theological liberal is? A theological liberal is somebody who digs through the Bible and finds the parts they don't like, and they cut them out. They pretend they're not there. If you don't like miracles, you get rid of them. If you don't like the omnipotence of God, you get rid of it. If you don't like the omniscience of God, you get rid of it. If you don't like the dual natures of Jesus, you get rid of it. If you don't like the virgin birth, you get rid of it. A theological liberal is somebody who stands in authority over the text of Scripture and thinks they get to choose what stays and what goes. Well, I am not a theological liberal, and I hope you won't be either. And so when the Bible tells me that God wants his purpose of election to stand, I'm not going to be a theological liberal. I want to listen to it. I want to embrace it. And because I'm not a theological liberal, I leave in the part about election. And because I'm not a theological liberal, I leave in the part about evangelism. And here's the funny thing. The Apostle Paul is concerned to teach the doctrine of election in Romans chapter 9. And in the very next chapter, I mean, literally, you just turn one page in your Bible. Some of it will have, you'll have it on the same page as your Bible. Just, just a handful of verses later, the Apostle Paul teaches the importance of evangelism. In Romans chapter 10, verse 11, it says, The Scripture says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And listen, verse 14, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in whom, in him whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? The Apostle Paul believes in the doctrine of election, and the Apostle Paul believes in the primacy of evangelism. We believe in evangelism, and we believe in election for the same reason. The Bible tells me so. We might not understand how those two things work together. We might have loads of questions about why God set it up the way he did it and the exact mechanism of how it all works. And in fact, all of us, if we're honest, have questions about all of those things. But what we don't have is the 
permission to reject either one. We don't have the permission to say, well, I'll get rid of election uh, because I don't like it. We also don't have the permission to say, I'll get rid of evangelism because I don't like that or I don't understand how it fits together. The Apostle Paul, writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, thought election and evangelism were both true and were not at odds with both of them. He wrote about both of them in the Scripture under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and so we believe both. Uh, If election is true, and it is because the Bible says so, why share the gospel? We do it for the same reason. The Bible says so.